Hello London, how you doing? You well? Yeah. Nice to be here. My name's Leo. I'm from Scotland. Any Scottish people in? Yeah. Nice. Good to see you out spending money. That is progress. <laughs> That's good to see. Like, I agree with, with Donald Trump. I, I like Don, Donald Trump as well. I agree with a lot of the stuff that Donald Trump says. I agree with Donald Trump that I would also like to have sex with his daughter. <laughs> really fit and I respect a man who can go on TV when he's running for president and say he wants to pump his own daughter and still win. That is some, <laughs> that is some Jedi skills. Yeah, people slag off Donald Trump, they're like, oh my god, he's such a terrible person, he wants to put children in cages, blah, 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 blah. Man, putting children in cages is a fantastic idea. <laughs> to refugee children coming over the border. Do it, do it to all children everywhere. Every pub in London should have a cage out the back and just fling these fucking brats and all these little Gideons and Esmeraldas wearing their petty bateau, which is French for little cunt, by the way. Get them in there, have a pint in peace. Man, nobody's going to knock over the Jenga. I agree with, with Donald Trump about the environment as well. Like, man, these environmentalists. I got talking to one of these Extinction Rebellion guys at a party, this vegan guy, and uh, when he finished telling me about veganism, he still had some energy left over. <laughs> and he told me off because uh, I was using a plastic drinking straw. He said, That's bad. That is single use plastic. I was like, what do you mean? He says, that's single-use plastic. After you've used that to drink your gin and tonic, it's going to go into the sea and kill a turtle. I said, well, then it's not single-use plastic. <laughs> I'm using it right now to drink a gin and tonic, and later on, I'm going to fuck up a turtle with it. <laughs> I'm actually very pro-turtle. I love those goofy little plastic-eating dickheads, man. <laughs> man, I've started to, to change my behaviour. It's all about changing your behaviour. I've started to, to, to do, do my bit. I've started putting plastic in the bin instead of putting it in the sea. <laughs> I'm making effort. When I was, I was in there, I was on holiday. <laughs> I was on holiday in Bali, and man, I was snorkeling on the coral reef, and you know, it was beautiful. I was watching the coral, all the fishies, all the turtles eating their plastic, and man, it was beautiful. And there was just so much plastic in the water, it's just banging off my head all the time. And it's just, it really brought it home to me that as a human race, we absolutely have to make plastic heavier. Just make it heavier. And it's gonna sink to the bottom of the sea. Nobody gives a fuck what it's down there. It's like, Away. Jesus Christ, let me later, Greenpeace. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, I got talking to this guy, this Extinction Rebellion guy. He's a white guy with dreadlocks, you know the kind of guy. Uh, <laughs> and I asked him what the environmental issues coming up are. I'm not joking, this is what he said. He said the insects are dying out. I'm not joking, the insects. I was like, oh, no, not the insects. Oh, you know, there's not going to be flies left to land in wet dog shit and then land on my chips. I'm not going to have to take my chips over the wet dog shit myself and tip them in. That sounds like a horrific inconvenience. Don't, don't want that dystopian future for my children. Any many moths left coming out, coming out of my room at night and clattering about? The amount of noise they make, you like, you're like, is that a mouse? Is that a rat? Have I got a rat in here? And then you turn on the light, it's just a fucking moth, the shittest of all the animals. I don't know how they survive outside. Like, a stiff breeze would kill them. You don't even need to hit them with a newspaper. Just waft near them with a rolled up telegraph. All of a sudden they're on the carpet going in circles, like, oh, I can't take it. Oh. I'm turning into eyeshadow. 
happy I don't talk into this guy. He was a fundraiser for Greenpeace or whatever fucking scam they got going, man. Like, <laughs> that is a scam. He's like, I'll give us money for the whales. It's like, why the whales need money? And they got little shops under the sea. Man, whales don't even have pockets. None of that money goes to whales. It all just goes to other hippies so they can buy a speedboat and take selfies on it and be like, oh yeah, I'm trying to save the orca. And then hippie women want to sit in their face. That's how that scam works. I've worked it out, man. But yeah, he was telling me, he was telling me global warming, that's, that's a big thing, climate change, like apparently it's going to be devastating because temperatures are going to rise by 1.2 degrees over the next hundred years, which is going to be devastating for Scotland. <laughs> Some of us might have to undo the top button on a duffel coat. <laughs> He said we're going to get more extreme weather as well. Like extreme weather in Britain. What are we going to get? Extreme drizzle. <laughs> I'm getting so gently moist, but slightly faster than it did a hundred years ago. I'm going to have to take the washing in eventually. <laughs> he also said sea levels are going to rise by six feet over the next hundred years, which is going to be devastating for people who can't walk uphill. <laughs> Really slowly. Who's so lazy they can't walk six feet up a beach in a hundred years? <laughs> it's gonna be devastating for fat people is what I'm trying to say. And they're already designed to live in the sea, so fuck them, we'll give them a snorkel. They'll live in the sea, they'll eat a seafood diet, it's very slim and all that plastic. They can rejoin us on land afterwards. Obviously, the state of comedy in 2019, there's probably a Guardian journalist in the audience be like, oh my god, that is awful, oh my god. He actually thinks that fat people should live in the sea, oh my god. Obviously, I don't think fat people should live in the sea. Like, sometimes comedians, we take an idea, we twist it, we like drag it to its logical extent, you know, play devil's advocate. See, I don't think fat people should live in the sea. I think fat people should be turned into dog food. <laughs> this night man because because uh, uh, well actually last time last time I did it I got, I got banned I did a bit and it got went out on the internet and then I got banned got banned from a bunch of places including my, my venue at the Perth Fringe in Australia which uh, was a huge inconvenience because it was my venue um, basically I was doing this show called Right Wing Comedian because I'm right wing I believe in smaller government lower taxes like more personal freedom you know I'm basically yeah, I'm basically Hitler you know and then, uh, <laughs> And people in comedy, they can't have that, you know what I mean? They're all for tolerance and diversity, but not when it's diversity of opinion, you know what I mean? Then it's, uh, it's got to stick to these very, stick to these very narrow bands. And, uh, so they did that thing, you know, when, when they, they, they wanted to cancel me, so they, they went through my Twitter. I hate it when they do this, they go back to like 2004 and find something that you posted when you're drunk and horny and uh, destroy a career. They did the same thing to me. They went all the way back to that afternoon. <laughs> the clip of me performing at Comedy Unleashed and, uh, and yeah, Castle, they were like, they were like, uh, they were like, this is an inclusive space, you have to leave. <laughs> Which I thought stretched the dictionary definition of an inclusive space. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of material, it was, about, uh, it was about transitioning and stuff. Ironically, I wrote it to a transgender woman I was dating, because it turns out I'm woker than all these cunts. <laughs> I totally recommend dating transgender women, by the way. Like, at my age, all the women look like Eddie Izzard anyway. <laughs> It's like going to a third world country, you can date way out of your league, it's fantastic, but... <laughs> but they said, uh, we only want woke comedians to perform here, so I was like, what the fuck's woke comedy? Like, I better find out, I better start doing it, like, get some of that woke dollar, you know what I mean, get on the BBC. <laughs> And uh, if you don't know what woke comedy is, basically it's, it's sort of like women's football. It gets written about. <laughs> it gets written about a lot in The Guardian, but it's shit. <laughs> Mostly just Oxbridge educated young attractive people complaining about privilege and uh, 
They weren't complaining about stuff like there's this woke comedian in America, Harry Condobulu. He tried to he tried to get the Simpsons cancelled. He said the character Apu in the Simpsons is racist. And, you know, the character Apu in the Simpsons is racist, like every single other character in the Simpsons. <laughs> Have you seen that Scottish guy? Oh, I'm so offended. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they said he got bullied at school because of a poo. It's like you didn't get bullied at school because of a poo. You got bullied at school because you're a soft cunt. <laughs> You did steroids and MMA, nobody would be coming up to you doing the voice, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I thought, I better, I better become woke, I better find out how to be woke. So I spoke to my wokest friend, like she's, she's black, she's mixed race, she's bisexual, you know, full woke, woke <laughs> points right there. And uh, she said, Leo, basically it's going to be very difficult for you, but there's some stuff, you know, you can be aware of, like, uh, like microaggressions. Like, if you don't know what microaggressions are, basically a microaggression is an aggression that's so tiny, you shouldn't really give a fuck about it. <laughs> If you're worried about microaggressions, go to Glasgow, see a full-size aggression! <laughs> Some of these microaggressions as well, apparently if you make too much eye contact with a woman then that can be seen as sexual harassment, but if you make insufficient eye contact with somebody that's a different ethnicity to you, that can be seen as racism, so to make sure you don't commit a microaggression, you've got to stand with your eyes swivelling in different directions. <laughs> can't win. Bullying, that's bad as well, that's not woke. And if woke people find somebody bullying, they will organise a mob on Twitter and go after that person. <laughs> which is not bullying, because it's woke, which is pious, like the Spanish Inquisition. You know, it's, it's good. <laughs> but bullying, man, I think bullying provides a valuable social purpose. Like, we've eliminated bullying in schools over the last 20 years, and as a result, we now have hipsters. <laughs> exist because nobody was sitting on them when they were 14 years old and punched them in the face and saying, don't get a penny far than Hugh Wanker. Coffee shouldn't cost more than two pounds. I don't care how many origins it's got. Fucking stop crafting lager. Just make lager. Just, just make it. Don't need to craft it. Just make, remember it tasted delicious now. It all tastes like fucking washing up liquid and fucking domestic. <laughs> Also, I've noticed every time there's a school shooting in America, every single time, they always say that the shooters were getting bullied. That shows that school bullies have got an innate ability to sniff out psychos. <laughs> we should be arming the bullies so they can finish the job properly. Before there's any more bloodshed. Obviously, if there's any Americans in tonight, don't take that idea back with you. That will become policy. <laughs> Apparently slut shaming, that's not woke at all. That's bad. Like, which I think is a shame. Like, I'm a slut. And I've got to be honest, like, shame is an excellent contraceptive. Shame is about the only thing between me and syphilis right now. <laughs> I got in trouble for slut shaming. Like basically, there was this uh, story going around on Facebook. There was this lassie in Magaluf, and she sucked off 32 guys in a bar in Magaluf for a bottle of cava. Like, not even prosecco, cava. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I shared that, I thought this, this was funny, I shared it, and then everybody, everybody piled on me, like the social justice warriors, they're all like, oh my god, oh my god, why, why are you slut shaming this woman? Why is nobody shaming these men? So I don't think legend shaming is going to catch on. <laughs> it's material, I don't do at other clubs, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> be all this woke stuff. Apparently, apparently, gender's a big thing these days. Like, uh, there's loads of genders. You got to use the right gender and stuff, man. You know, I, I, I want to make people, you know, feel, um, you know, like they're part of everything and not feel excluded and whatever. But man, there's 348 genders, recognised genders now. That's a lot. You know what I mean? I grew up in the 90s. Like we. We had two genders and four TV channels, and we needed two TV guides just for that, you know what I mean? It's several times. 348 genders, well, I'll go through them all, because we've got five and a half hours. Like, basically, a bimigender, that's a gender that's profound, deep, and infinite. 
Okay, there's, uh, there's absorb gender, there's a gender that changes to conform to the genders of people around you, but you still got to keep tabs on it and use the right one or you're going to jail in Canada. Although, <laughs> although when, when you get sentenced, you can then say that you're a woman and go to a jail with nicer toilets. Um, <laughs> There's, uh, there's uh, Adam Mass gender, that's a gender that's pref Oh wait, what the fuck of a... The Adam Mass gender, I can't remember. Man, I never fucking do this material. There's affect to gender, that's a gender affected by mood swings, also known as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and they're wanting people to be able to transition, like children to transition at younger and younger ages. And I think it's great that children are being encouraged to live the life that they want to live, but you know, how much does a seven-year-old really know about their gender? Like, and a, about an important decision like that. When I was seven years old, I really wanted to be a teenage mutant ninja turtle. <laughs> I think there was some merit in me not being allowed to have a turtle shell irremovably grafted to my back. <laughs> I just don't think I could eat all that plastic. <laughs> Apparently I've got, a, I've got a lot of toxic masculinity as well, which, is, which isn't woke at all. If you don't know what toxic masculinity is, apparently, apparently masculine traits like being aggressive and being good at fighting, they're seen as bad these days, but they're only seen as bad because for the last like 50 years we haven't had bears and Nazis and Vikings to fight. Like we don't know that they're not coming back. You know there's only a certain amount of oil and internet left and then we descend into this Mad Max dystopia. <laughs> the Vikings that they'll smell weakness, they'll come back, they'll start fucking with us again. Like, what are you gonna do if the Vikings land and they're like down in the village and you run up to the men, all these non-toxic men, you're like, guys, guys, can you help us? The Vikings have come back and they're down in the village committing some really large microaggressions. <laughs> and all these non-toxic guys are frantically trying to assemble an online petition out of twigs. <laughs> trying to word it so it doesn't sound anti-immigration against Vikings. <laughs> can make some toxic masculine men to go down there and fuck up the Vikings. That's <laughs> but apparently the biggest thing stopping me being woke is just the fact that like, I'm white and that's, that's, uh, that's bad. You know what I mean? Like, apparently I've got a, light, a lot of white privilege. And, uh, but man, I've I got, I got to say, you know, man, I'm, sp I'm supposed to like atone and acknowledge my, my white privilege, but I don't want to. I just want to enjoy it. Can I just enjoy one fucking thing in my life? Like, Jesus Christ. It's not like I've got a lot of white privilege. Like, somebody like Benedict Cumberbatch, he's got an insane amount. He, like, his ancestors got really rich off the slave trade, like, really evil stuff, and they kept that money, and then they could afford to send Benedict to this £35,000 a year school. And no wonder he became a top actor. His school drama department had a dedicated set designer. They Dedicated carpenter, dedicated costume. -y. That's a word so posh it's not even English. <laughs> like my school, the dinner lady was also the careers advisor. <laughs> There's different levels of white privilege. Like, we didn't have a level playing field at my school. I mean, we literally did not have a level playing field. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so I sat down with my woke friend and uh, made a guide to, to not being racist in 2019. Because it's difficult now, man. I, I grew up in the 90s. If you didn't want to be a racist in the 90s, it was simple. You just weren't a racist and then you weren't a racist. It was a system that seemed to make a lot of sense at the time. <laughs> Now it's a lot more complicated, there's a lot of terminology, a lot of stuff you've got to keep on top of, and the terminology changes all the time, you've got to use the right terminology, if you use the wrong stuff you're not woke anymore and then you're bad, you get, you know, you get called a racist on Twitter, which is the worst thing that can happen to a white person in 2019. So basically, here's, here's a guide to, to not being racist in 2019, so if someone's black, and call them black, but if they're not black, but also not white, then it's person of colour. If you say black, but actually they're just really dark brown, you're a racist, unless they're mixed race, in which case it's not racist, depending on which races. Don't use the term coloured, you racist, that's racist now. People of colour means the exact same thing, but isn't racist, nobody knows why. If someone's not white but not black, you can clarify by using the term non-black person of colour, but if you get that wrong, you're racist in three continents and five time zones, you fucking Nazi racist. <laughs> the term mixed race is still acceptable, even though it's racist because it implies the concept of racial purity, like Hitler would do, you fascist white supremacist, but it's not scheduled to be banned until 2020. Everyone not white is a person of colour, but call them all a person of colour is also a bit racist because you're grouping highly disparate racist and cultures under one banner, like a fucking white supremacist racist would do, you fucking Nazi. Being a 
handy catch-all term for anyone you think isn't white, but unfortunately it's currently only allowed to be used by corporate HR departments and must be followed by the word excellence at least 50% of the time, or you're a racist. Everyone who voted for Brexit is a white racist, even though they're voting to end the preferential immigration treatment given to white Europeans over brown nations. <laughs> is racist, but complaining about gentrification, which is just middle class people doing the exact same thing and moving into an area, is totally woke. If you want to be prejudiced, if you want to be prejudiced and still be woke, don't worry, you can be as anti-Semitic as you like. If a non-woke person makes a good point in an argument, it can instantly be nullified by saying, yeah, but what about Israel? <laughs> People are either allies or white supremacists, culturally appropriate and patriarchal, racist, misogynist, oppressors, depending on how far advanced they are in their gender studies degree. White people are all privileged, which is evil. If you're white and you don't acknowledge and atone for your white privilege, then you're a Nazi, you fascist, white supremacist, Nazi. It's important to be woke, but the term woke was itself appropriate from black culture. Anything you say today is going to be racist in five years' time, so basically you're fucked, you might as well vote for Donald Trump, you fucking Nazi. <laughs> So yeah, like I say, man, it's great. We've got this club that, you know, you can come and like, you don't self-censor and stuff. Cause man, it happens a lot. I was, I was doing a show. I was doing a show in Leicester a few months back and uh, told, the, told this uh, joke, you know, a little bit of a fat joke or whatever. Well, it was a like Greenpeace bit, you know what I mean? And somebody in the audience got really angry. They got really angry. They thought I was being mean to fat people. And I mean, I was being mean to fat people, but they got really angry and they went away and they blogged about it on the internet with their pudgy little fingers. <laughs> And then I was doing a show in London, and because of this blog, fat activists turned up to demonstrate against my show. I'm not joking, halfway through the show, these fat activists stood up. Kind of slowly. <laughs> and they shouted, we are fat activists, and I had to agree with them, they were fat as fuck activists. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be a tough job, by the way, being a fat activist, because if you get too active, you might stop being so fucking fat. <laughs> I managed to escape by walking up some stairs. <laughs> One of them threw a milkshake at me, but it was empty. <laughs> Folks, if you want to follow me, I'm on like, YouTube and Instagram and all that. I'm on Instagram as uh, Scottish Comedian. All one word, Scottish Comedian. I couldn't believe it was available either. <laughs> It'd be great if you followed me, because every time I post something, I lose about 20 followers. But <laughs> you got a brilliant lineup coming up. Thanks for listening. I've been Leo Cash. Cheers.